Hey guys, Probable 1701 here, and today we're going to be talking about 60s Doctor Who, but instead of talking about missing episodes, we're going to talk about recovered episodes, or episodes that we have in the archives now, and we're going to be looking at 10 60s Doctor Who stories that I am grateful exist. I'm grateful for all of them, to one degree or another, even Web Planet, to one degree or another, but I'm going to talk about 10 that I'm really grateful for are complete and that we do have and that we can watch all the way through without recons or animations or anything. Uh, and these aren't in any particular order. I'm just going to name them as I wrote them. Um, and the first one is An Unearthly Child. I'm glad, especially for episode one. We need episode one. So I am glad that both versions, I guess, of episode one exist. It's just a, such a phenomenal story. But I like episodes two, three, and four as well. And plus, it's just nice to have that full original story that people can go back to and see and experience. It would be very rough if the very first episode of Doctor Who was missing, especially part one, if uh, the literal first episode was gone. That would really be a heavy blow. So I'm kind of, I'm glad it completely exists because it is the first story. Number two on the list is The Daleks. Now I am not the huge, the biggest fan of The Daleks. It drags at seven parts, but being the first Dalek story and being kind of the story that really helped make Doctor Who successful. I mean, where would Doctor Who be without the Daleks, <clears throat> the creature and the story? So I'm grateful that it exists for that. Plus, I do enjoy having the colorized version of it as well. Um, I like the fact that people can experience the full original Dalek story and can see why the Daleks became such a phenomenon, why Dalek mania existed and why Doctor Who's popularity started to take off here. Next on the list is the Dalek Invasion of Earth. This is my favorite Hartnell Dalek story. Now that I've seen all of Hartnell's Dalek stories, I like this one. I love the location work. It's just so iconic. And to be able to see that. Uh, I like the guest characters. I like the war-torn look of the city that I don't think the animation would be able to fully recapture. There's just something about the look of this story I really enjoy. Um... Uh, and having it actually existing really sells it. Getting Hartnell's famous uh, one day I will come back speech. Being able to not just hear that, but see it. Seeing the look on Hartnell's face as he delivers it. And the bit at the end where he goes, goodbye, Susan. Goodbye, my dear. The look on his face sells a lot of that. There's so much that's lost when you have to watch something by animation. And so being able to just see all of that is a real treat. Next on the list is the War Games. How much of a miracle is it that all 10 episodes of the War Games exist? The fact we have all 10 episodes of the War Games and we can watch Troughton's final story in its entirety. And it's such a good story. I know there's a lot of they get captured, they escape, they get captured, they escape. That never drags for me because they keep getting captured by different armies. And then how just what's going on in the story kind of peels away like an onion in layers as you figure out more and more of what's going on. And then, of course, the cliffhanger to episode 9 is classic. And then episode 10 is a must-watch. Much must-watch. Can you imagine if episode 10 was missing and we had to do that entire scene with animation? And you'd lose so much of the nuances from Troughton's performance. Even just him waving goodbye at Jamie and Zoe. That's one of my favorite scenes in all of Doctor Who. That little wavy, there's just something about that I absolutely adore. Um, so I'm very grateful for the War Games, all 10 episodes for it, that we could see Troughton's final story in its entirety. Uh, next on the list is Tomb of the Cybermen. Now, I find Tomb of the Cybermen a bit overrated. I prefer Cybermen stories like The Moon Base and The Invasion. But the great thing about Tomb of the Cybermen is that since there are so few complete Troughton stories, <coughs> only seven, and five of those are from season six, Two makes a great entry point for people who are new to either Classic Who or new to the Second Doctor era. So if you're recommending someone, hey, I've not, I haven't seen a lot of the Second Doctor, what story can you recommend? Besides possibly recommending Three Doctors or Five Doctors, which is also a great entrance for Troughton, honestly. You know, recommending an actual Second Doctor story from the existing stories gets tricky because you don't want to recommend a Season 4 story because they're at least half missing. And they might not be used to watching... Doctor Who in animated form or animated slash live action form for some of the stories. And then you might not want to miss a story that's partly missing, like even Web of Fear, because they might have trouble with either the animation for the episode three or the Telesnapper episode three. Um, you want to give them a complete story to start with. The Dominators isn't a really a good choice because it's not that great. 
The mine robber could be, but it is a bit trippy. There's a lot going on in the mine robber. So whether or not they might be up for that is open for debate uh, for something like the mine robber. The Crotons, while I personally like the Crotons, I know it doesn't have the most popular reputation. At four parts, it's not overly long, but I don't know if there's enough going on in, to, in it to really grab a newcomer's attention. Seeds of Death is a possible one, and Enemy of the World is a possible one, but they are six-parters. So I don't know if, again, someone new to Classic Who, new to the Trouton era, I don't know how they would feel about a six-parter. Tomb of the Cybermen works because it's four parts, it's a good story, and it has the Cybermen, which is a recognizable villain. And plus it does have some iconic work in it. So while I think it's a little overrated, it is still a good story and it's not too long and it has a familiar foe. I think it is a great entry point for someone new to the second Doctor era and 60s Doctor Who. Uh, Planet of Giants is another one I am glad exists. It's a very underrated story. I think it probably stands in Dalek Invasion of Earth's Shadow coming right before it. Um, but a lot of the work on it just would not work as well in animated form because I love the set designs and it. it does a really good job of making them look like they're shrunk down in basically a land of the giants. Very honey, I shrunk the kids that I feel like animation wouldn't have gotten across as well. And I love a lot of those sets, especially uh, the sink. I really love the sink. It really is like watching a teleplay, like watching a play on your TV the way it's done. And I love that. And I feel like the animation wouldn't be able to capture that as effectively. Um, and because of that, I'm really, really grateful this story exists. It's a really good story, very underrated story. Next on the list is The Time Meddler. This is my favorite Hartnell story. Uh, I feel like you would lose some of the nuances in the acting, especially Peter Buttersworth. I love the physical comedy, what he does with his face, the way he says his lines, his body language. And then the scenes with him and Hartnell together are great, are really good. And I feel like those little touches you would lose in animation, you wouldn't get them. Uh, like, Time Meddler probably wouldn't be my favorite first Doctor story if, if we didn't have it. But I am grateful it's, well, near enough complete. I think we're missing 14 seconds from it. They cleverly refilled those in in the box set, though. But I, enough, I consider it complete. And it, it's such a fun romp um, that whenever I watch it, I'm always like, I'm so glad this one exists. I'm so glad we have this one. I'm so glad Season 2 isn't in the same shape as Season 3. Um... Next on the list is the Aztecs. I enjoy this one. Now, I am not as into the Aztecs as some people, but it is a good story. I think Barbara, I really like the focus on Barbara in this a lot. I love the conversations between the Doctor and Barbara about time travel. I like Ian doing some of his battling, the, the guy playing the sacrifice guy who's also Ash and calling him space. He's great. Uh, you would lose, again, a, little, a lot of the subtleties in performance. You would lose in animated form or you just definitely wouldn't be able to follow in telesnap form. And then I love a lot of the sets as well. The sets look really good. And then the comedy of the Doctor accidentally getting engaged. Uh, the Aztecs is a popular story for a very good reason, to be fair. And I just feel like if we didn't have it, it wouldn't be as well regarded. Um, being able to watch it just is, it, is a treat. It really is. Next on the list is Enemy of the World. I am, I'm glad we have Enemy of the World, even though it's not one I go back to a lot and I do find it overrated. One, we get to see all the performances Troughton has going on, which if you think about it, it's really four performances because he's playing the Doctor, he's playing Salamander, he's playing the Doctor pretending to be Salamander, which is different. And then he's playing Salamander pretending to be the Doctor briefly, which is also different. So it's really nice to actually see his performances there because he's such a good actor. Uh, and it also gives us a... Uh, one more complete Troughton story that's pre-season six, because we only have two complete Troughton stories that are that are before season six, of course, being Tomb and Enemy of the World. So I am grateful for that as well. Um, plus, it just it runs pretty well at six parts. I think it's paced decently. It's, again, not one I go back to, but I th it is a popular one with a lot of people. And I'm glad that we have another pre-season six Troughton story people can experience. And then last on the list, and this was tough because I had trouble picking between two. I mentioned the other one as well, was the Romans. Because I love the Romans. And so much of the Romans is down to its physical humor. 
that would not translate as well in animation. Uh, for example, the doctor battling with uh, the Roman soldier. Something about it's just amusing. Nero chasing after Barbara is funny to me. Uh, I love, the guy playing Nero is great. What he does with his facial expressions, almost like an overgrown child, is perfect. He plays this, this, this what they're going for for Nero in this story, he plays perfectly with this kind of overgrown kid who's never been told no. And it's like, oh, you guessed. You know, his facial expression, you would lose that in the animations. And having that here is great. Plus Hartnell, sometimes when he's talking with Nero, Yes, I think we should give them something we should they can really sink their teeth into. The look on Hartnell's face is perfect there. Like he he's having a little inside joke that only he knows. I love that, which is kind of the case. I love that. And then the sword fight between Ian and the other guy when they're sword fighting because Nero's watching, you would lose that as well, and that probably definitely wouldn't work as well in animated form. So I don't think I would have such a love for the Romans if it was animated, if we didn't actually have it. And I definitely don't know how it would work in telesnap form. I think you'd lose a lot of the comedy. So much of the comedy is down to the body language and the facial expressions, and losing that would really uh, undercut the comedy aspect from the story, which would make it not nearly as entertaining as it is. And then the other one I wanted to put on the list is uh, The Keys of Marinus, because just because I feel like it would be terrible. It would be very difficult to animate because... Each episode takes place in a different spot, so you'd have to animate different characters for basically each episode and different sets for each episode. Keys of Marinus would be one I think would have been a huge hurdle for them to animate if it had been missing. Uh, so I'm glad we actually have it complete because we probably would have been just stuck with Telesnap recons of it if it hadn't been existing. So I'm glad it does fully exist because one, it's a great story. I absolutely love the Keys of Marinus. And two it probably would have been very difficult to animate and um, I wouldn't have liked just watching Telesnap recons of it. So I'm glad it fully exists. So those are stories that I am grateful for, that I'm so happy we have. I'm happy we have all of them, even The Chase. I'm happy for every single 60s episode that does exist. But those are just kind of 10, well, I guess 11, stories that I'm super grateful for, not just for me, but for the fandom as a whole. So I want to know what you think of this. Comment down below and let's talk about it. Other things to do, don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another video. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support me on that. There's a link to that down in the description below. I want to give a shout out to a couple of my top tier patrons, Colin Coney and Finn Perkins. I appreciate their support. As I do the support of all of my patrons, YouTube memberships are also available. And most importantly, thank you for watching.